Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the greatest time of the day. From the center of the universe, New York City, it's the main event you've been waiting for. It's time to go in the cage with Cyclone! And no. Oh, sorry about that, folks. Your Messiah is back, and he's expecting a guest any minute. Hopefully, fingers, arms, eyes crossed too. Anyways, it is episode twenty-eight. Wow, twenty-eight episodes. In the cage with Cyclone. Tell you, I am exhausted. It took me three plus hours to get down here today. In the city, running around with one Mr. Daniel Cormier, who, by the way, loved the Chuck Liddell hat. Um, it's cool. It's comfortable. Happy early Halloween, even though everybody celebrated it last weekend. You know, you know what? If you're going to celebrate Halloween, like the weekend before Halloween, before the 31st, then you know what? I'm going to celebrate Christmas in, like, March. I think that's a fair trade. Uh, so, check out CycloneComedy.com. Check out Psyche Prods on Facebook. Check out everybody here at Strong Island. And, um, of course, share the video. Pretty please. Uh, there's so much to talk about, so you know what? We're going to just jump into the show, and then we'll let see what happens happens. Um, let's recap what, what the craziness that was this past weekend, besides all of you people celebrating Halloween. Um, one championship who's obviously in the news a lot, signing Eddie Alvarez and trading for uh, DJ... All in the span of 48 hours. Two thumbs up for those guys. Um, Ang Lin, Ang La and Sang uh, is still their middleweight champion. If you go back watch last week's episode, I told you he would beat Muhammad Karakai. Told you, and it happened once again. He was truly is correct, right? As always, you know, that's me. Um... 221 of round one, he uh, TKO'd him. Now, look, here's the thing about Ong. Most of the people on this planet don't watch MMA from Asia. Most people in this country don't watch MMA from anywhere but the United States. And let me tell you something. The guys in one championship are serious dangerous fighters. You know what? I'm going to show you what he did. Bobby, play video number two, please. He predicted who would finish Karaki inside of three. There's an open back. He's level Karaki. The big comeback. Here it comes. The round. Is this it? Busted. His nose is busted. 
conference championship would never trade him. Okay, they're not going to trade away, you know, a champ champ. Okay, that's never going to happen. And they're not going to trade one of their own. But this guy is dangerous. Okay. Um, that was, by the way, his 17th first round finish in 24 wins. Seriously, he is doing a lot of damage there. And it's somebody you guys keep your eyes on if you want to expand your knowledge of MMA and combat sports. Uh, former UFC fighter who's now in one championship, besides DJ and Eddie Alvarez, uh, Tai Chi Abi took a fight on short notice. And here's the thing. There's two ways of looking at a short notice fight. Number one, no pressure on you. You go in, you should be ready, boom. The other th thought is not enough time to prepare. And sadly for Tai Chi, it was definitely not by no means necessary enough time for him. Uh, he got murked. Okay, by Luis Santos. Bobby, that's video number three. Like I said earlier, whenever you thought the body kicks dropped him and threw that away. Body kick. We told you when you take on Sabo Santos, you're gonna get hurt. And Aichi Abe, a single body kick. Knocks him out in the first round. Classic Sapo Santos. Is that the contender for the knockout of the night? Look at that. Toes to the body and Ave just crumbles. Trying to strike with Luis Sapo Santos is like trying to catch a falling knife. And I watched the whole fight. That's just a, a clip. He hit him with two other shot, uh, two other body kicks too. Third time was the charm. See what I'm talking about, people? The guys in one championship, and even the ladies are, are just as tough. Okay, uh, those guys are serious business. Eddie and DJ, God bless them. Godspeed. God be with them. They're in for the time of their lives. That's all the people do there in Asia and Malaysia and the Philippines. 24-7, 365. 366 on a leap year. It's martial arts training. It's a whole new ball game over there for these guys. Uh, also, Fight Night 138 in... Uh, Mockton, New Brunswick, not Jersey, Canada, which by the way, if you guys don't know, everyone talks Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, locks is really good, and trust me, I'm Jewish, I know, I know these things, all right, we're, we're born to taste locks, and there's some good stuff up there, anyways, that's just a side comment, uh, T. Edwards, who was a KO machine, gets on the Dana White Contender Series, wins by, by first round knockout there. Comes over, gets his first fight in the UFC, and in the first round, he survived this crazy assed armbar from Dan Madge. Okay. 14 seconds. Into the second round. This happened, Bobby. Play number four. MMA on the map, and he certainly did that in the first five minutes. His match again moves forward. He can't kick up top this time. That was through the goal. Oh, 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 Jeez Louise. That hurts me just looking at it. And no, Joe, he cannot hit Eli Manning, all right? You, you, you. You should, you should not say that as a Giants fan. Um, no, no, uh-uh. Um, anyways, 
what else happened out there? Long Island native who lives not too far from here, John Volante, wins again. Split decision over uh, over um, Ed uh, Hearn. Sorry, I'm vapor locked for a second. And then afterwards, he teased that he's going up to heavyweight. Now, look, John Volante, he's a great guy. He's a good kid, nice human being. But he plods in, all right? He's, for a wrestler to not be on the balls of his feet, I don't see how that happens to him. But he's plodding, and his face always gets kicked in. It does, okay? It's redder than these walls, and it's redder than the red that the Bloods wear in L.A., that's what his face looks like after every fight he's in. You know what? Him going up to heavyweight? Really? You got hard hitters there, John. Gianni boy. That's not really smart move. It's really, really not. You don't want to go up there. Stay at 205. It's better for you. Especially since maybe John Jones will be going up to heavyweight himself. Don't, don't swing, swim with the big fish. Uh, Artem Lobov, we will see if he's a man of his word. Giving back uh, Michael Johnson his money that he lost from his fight purse for coming in overweight by a pound. And he took the fight on short notice. But be that as may, the rules are you must forfeit 20% of your purse if you're overweight. One pound over, bye-bye 20%. Artem said that I don't want his money. I'm just happy he took the fight. I'm giving his, him his money back. Now that he lost, let's see if he's a man of his word. As, as of... Before the show starting, no word on him giving his money back. So, Artem, come on. Open up the wallet and uh, give him back his money. Anthony Smith. What can we say about this guy? Anthony Smith is proving he is a contender. Someone who should be in the, the title talk for 205. Look. This Saturday at 2.30, the second Herb Dean says fight, DC has that title taken away, whether he likes it or not. So he'll no longer be the 205 champ. Gus against John, 2.32 is for that championship. Anthony Smith is looking like the guy that should be the first. I don't think they would do like an immediate rematch. I, I think it would have to be Anthony Smith getting the first shot. And then maybe that winner fights Gus. And then that fi winner fights Vulcan. Sort of like a reverse type tournament. Where winner fights loser fights winner fights loser. I don't know. I'm just spitballing things out here. Um, also, this Saturday, there was boxing at Madison Square Garden, the final HBO card. My goodness, no more HBO boxing. They are out of the fight game completely. And uh, here's the thing about the main event between Danny Jacobs and fellow Brooklyn boy. And uh, Sergey uh, Derevchenko, if you want to go to the next level, if you want to take on the, the top guys, you got to prove that you're worthy. You can't just slide in. It was a back and forth fight, and, and look, Sergey's no slouch. Okay, he is one of the best fighters on this planet. But it's a far distance between him and Danny Jacobs, 
and Danny fought down to the level of his competition. After the fight, after he wins the IBF middleweight championship, calls out Canelo Alvarez. Now look, I'll stick with my Brooklyn boys through thick and thin, but the fact of the matter is, if he put on a performance like he put on Saturday against Canelo, man, that Mexican flag would be waving again because Canelo would smoke him. No other way to say it. And there was another great back and forth fight that night. Another Brooklynite. My girlfriend, she just doesn't know yet. Heather Hardy becoming finally a champion. A nice new belt. Winning the WBO featherweight title against her heated rival, Shelly Vincent. And you guys don't know. They fought once before. Heather just edged her out on a decision. This time, even though it was a back and forth contest, the decision even definitely more one-sided. But the rivalry really heated up because for the weigh-ins, and Bellator does their weigh-ins in front of the public, um, Shelly Vincent tried to storm the stage while Heather was getting weighed in. And Bellator security, you know, grabbed her and put, you know, pulled her away. That rivalry between the two of them is something that's... You know, every fighter, every person needs a great foil. Tom had Jerry, Bert had Ernie. I have food. Everyone needs a good foil. And not aluminum. Heather and Shelly Vincent... Are, are they hate each other so much that that they bring out the best in each other, okay? And honestly, women fighters look. As someone who used to be a sexist pig, and forgive me if you're watching and you're a female, but I used to be. Women bring it more than the guys do, in every sport in the WNBA. In MMA, as a matter of fact, this is what we call perfect segue because last night, not too far from here at the Nassau County Veterans Memorial Coliseum, first ever female pay-per-view full card evolution. Now look, the WWE has been riddled with bad writing. I mean, Hollywood's, Hollywood writers suck, and they don't suck as bad as the WWE writers. This card last night was a complete 180 from where they've been going, okay? Fact of the matter is, it was a small... A, it was well-written, number one, before I even get to number two. Number two, it was absolutely... Perfectly timed. And what I mean by that is, it was only seven fights. It wasn't long, drawn out bullcrap. It wasn't people sitting there going, oh. okay. There wasn't a wasted spot. Every spot meant something in the storyline. Every, every, there was perfect flow. And the WWE, honestly, hasn't had that flow in. God knows how long. And they picked a perfect time to do it. Okay. And hats off to these w women wrestlers because, man, they absolutely brought it. Lita, ah, uh, Lita. Trish Stratus r made her debut at the Coliseum umpteen thousand years ago. Made her return to the Nassau County Coliseum last night. Her and Lita beat, uh, Alicia Fox and Mickey James. Truth be told, if I was a fly on the wall, I'd want to know one thing. How many wrestlers backstage gave Mickey James crap about CM Punk? You know, I, I don't remember, maybe I was spaced out, but I don't remember the, hearing the crowd, you know, with any stupid CM Punk chants, but 
Wonder how many of the of the old boys in the back gave her the business about CM. Don't know. I wasn't a fly on the wall. That's why I said I wish I was. Um, and honestly, one of the I say top twenty five fights of all time in in WWF. Well, WWWF, WWF, WWE history. In the company's history, top 25 match happened last night between uh, Becky and Charlotte. Look, Charlotte being Rick's daughter ha- just has the, the, the pedigree, okay? And she's, and she's great at everything she does. But Becky is... I don't think there's ever been a heel cheered so much as Becky is. Okay. Piper wasn't. Um, Hogan and NWO, I guess maybe kind of that, but Becky's cheered more than, Ho- than Hollywood Hogan ever was, I think. Becky, is, and the spot she hit, she hit... She one power bomb from the apron to the floor, through a table, goes up a ladder and leg drop and hits a leg drop spot on Charlotte through the uh, German announcers table. She hits these incredible spots. Becky is. If Becky was a guy, they'd have the heavyweight championship around her waist for a long time. I think I'm right on that. I I really do. Uh, So that was what happened this week. What we're going to do is take a quick break. But before then, I want to remind everyone, after me, keep it here because this is the lineup. Okay. Pinups, Cool Cats, and Comics after me. Show kicks ass. It does. Okay, you got My House Show, followed by Saki Radio. So it's nonstop fantastic stuff here. So just keep it here and keep sharing. Click share. I know you can do it. It's really easy. Take a finger and go click. And we'll be back right after this. This is Frank Yeager. This is the Barbarian, Tim Bosch. I'm World Series of Fighting undefeated lightweight champion, Justin Gaethje. Yeah. MMA legend, UFC Hall of Famer, Ice Man. Check it out. If you got the guts, step in the cage with Cycle. All right, so looking forward, if we will, CES 53 is coming up in Rhode Island. And, uh... Dennis Pavia, who just had a four-fight win streak stopped by first-round knockout, by the way, um, is going after the vacant bantamweight championship for CES. All right, and he's taking on the red-hot, red, red red-hot Tony Gravely, who's on a three-fight winning streak. Two of the three are first round and the third fight, early second round, I believe. And I'm doing this without looking off my memory, which is sometimes mostly right. Um, then 2.30, which is... Look, I spent earlier today with Israel Adesanya and, and Daniel Cormier. And look, 2.30 is starting to basically look like a glorified fight night card. It's what it's looking like. It is. There's no other way to describe what the card's looking. And it, I, it's nobody's fault. I mean, look, Dustin gets hurt. Nate pulls out. Nate, Nate would have, should have, and could have still been on the card, all right? Disappointed once again in a Diaz brother. So we're we're left with Daniel Cormier, who told Luke Thomas last week 
that he still can't close his hand. Won't fight Manawa, won't fight John, won't fight Gustafson, won't fight Stipe in a rematch. Derek Lewis's balls get hot, throws one punch, 11 seconds left, wins by knockout, and suddenly, hey, look, my hand's, my hand's better. I can close it now. DC might say to everybody that, hey, Derek deserves a shot. And honestly, look, Derek's on a hot streak. He deserves a title shot. But he doesn't deserve it over Stipe. Maybe over Gustafson, maybe over Manawa, maybe over John Jones. Not Stipe. Stipe deserved the rematch. He did. All politics. That's what it is. There's no two ways about it. Okay? When you look at what goes down on stuff like that, it's almost disheartening that that the mecca, the the garden, the the place where, where the last two garden cards just blew the roof off the building. This one... If people show up, they're probably going to be sleeping halfway through the card. They are. And I don't even think it's going to sell out. I think this is going to be the worst pay-per-view numbers ever, which is more proof that the pay-per-view model doesn't work. And they need to go streaming, even though they just signed that deal with ESPN, which they're going to do double the amount of cards and still have the same number on roster. Makes no sense. Anyways, I think DC is going to... God, you know, it would it would serve the company right if Derek Lewis knocks De- uh, DC out. It really would. And the funny thing is... With everybody wanting a piece of DC, sitting cage side is going to be Brock Lesnar, is going to be John Jones, is going to be Alexander Gustafson, is going to be Stipe Miocic. All four are sitting cage side. So technically speaking, after that fight with Derek Lewis is over, win, lose, or draw, if all four decided to pull like a, a reverse Khabib and run into the cage, I have like a battle, mini battle royal going on with five heavyweights. That might be something of, I mean, I don't, I don't think that would happen, but it would be very, very, very interesting. Just think about that. Um, so the other person who I, Hang, hung out with earlier today was, like I said, Israel Adesanya. And I think he, this is going to be his coming out party. I think he's going to murk Derek Brunson. I don't think he gets out of the first round. And as it turns out, a little scoop before you guys hear it on TMZ, uh, one of the TMZ gentlemen was talking to Israel also and said, who, you know, who do you want next? He didn't name any names, but I was standing behind Israel and I just screamed out, Paulo Costa. Look, as of right now, they're both undefeated. Israel likes to chirp. Paulo's starting to chirp. Both undefeated, both both red hot. That's a fight I would love. That fight should be at the Garden. That's the fight that needs to be made. So as you click share, one of you please share this along and tag Dana White in this so Dana can hear that. That's the fight that needs to be made. It does. It needs to be made fast. And who knows where Ben Askren's going to fight, you know, He's called out every single lightweight. He's called out every single welterweight. Could go up to middleweight, too. He's called everybody out. Um, and I'll get into the whole Ben Askren thing in a, 
little while. That's a tease, by the way. Um, so what we'll do now is take another just really fast break. And when we come back, we'll do some more bits. Hi, I'm Jim Miller. This is Dan Mergliotta. I'm Derek Brunson. I'm Nick the Carney Lentz, and you're locked into the cage with Cyclone. All right, so like I keep saying, please share this. Share this. View this. Watch this. Tag your friends. Tag people you don't like in this so they get to see it. Okay? Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so, on this date, 2011, UFC 137. And if you think UFC 230 had its issues, 137, if you remember back in 2011, they had their issues. Uh, Carlos Condit got taken off the card. GSP got taken off the card. Cowboy Cerrone got taken off the card. That whole card was a mess. But there were three great standout performances at 137. And that was Nick Diaz beating BJ Penn by unanimous decision. That was Czech Congo, one of my favorite names in all of MMA. Czech Congo, Czech Congo, winning by... Unanimous decision over a younger Matt Mitrione. Which, if they rematch now, there's no way Mitrione's losing to Czech Congo. No way. And, Mirko Krokop losing by unanimous decision to big country Roy Nelson. That happened on this date, 2011. And that's the only thing that happened on this date in MMA history. How is it there's no birthdays today? Wow, it's like parents knew not to to conceive on this day. It's a conspiracy. Someone call CNN or or Fox or somebody. It's some sort of conspiracy. Uh, Let's do the raffle. And since there was only one... Entry, which disappoints me, you guys. You guys need to be raffled. No, Rudy. Brock will not be in Saudi Arabia. Brock will be on uh, 7th Avenue between 33rd and 34th Street. Hey, Jace. Um... You know what, Dennis? You're right. Stone Cold was great as a heel, but not as great as Becky. Becky's taking this a whole new le- a whole new leather, a whole new level. Speaking of levels, listen, guys. I need you all to enter the raffles. I put them up Saturday night, Sunday morning. Enter the raffle so I can spin this thing so I could answer your questions. And one of you is going to win a prize. But you know what? One person entered, Kenny Hodgkin, and guess what? You're winning a prize automatically. I'm sending you a prize. Okay? As a matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? I just, I'm going to make an amendment to that. Kenny, I am sending you not one, but two gifts I am sending you. Okay. I appreciate your support. Just keep on doing it. Pretty please. And um, you're going to get your prize in the mail. Okay. Well, your two prizes. Okay. Just keep your eyes out for it. Anyways, here is your question. What's one trade you'd like to see made between companies? And when I saw this, I thought long and hard about this. And I was like, what companies do I want to involve in this one trade? And you know what? I can't do what you asked. You asked for one trade. But you know how I'm giving you two prizes? There are two trades that I really just, 
I love being general manager. It's like in fantasy sports. You got to give something to get something. Okay. So here are the two trades, and both of them involve Bellator. Okay. This first one's going to be really, really crazy. I'm telling you guys right now. Okay. Um, I have the UFC giving Bellator middleweight Christoph Jotko and either heavyweight Marcin Turba or heavyweight Stefan Struve. Now, you're going to say, yo, you can't give up Stefan Struve. Like I said, you, when you're getting something, you got to give up something. So either one of those two guys, not both, either Turba or Stefan Struve and Christoph Jocko going to Bellator. In return, Bellator gives the UFC Rafael Lovato Jr. He would absolutely, he is a, a middleweight who who's, has a, the best ground game there is. Now look, like I said, Paulo Costa, Israel Adesanya. You got guys like that starting to make the move up. The majority of the middleweight division is, for all intents and purposes, stale. That's that's it, baby. That 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 trade I think works. And here's the other trade. This one's not so nuts. Granted, the first one is. Um, it involves, like I said, Bellator. And it involves the PFL. The PFL is going to give up featherweight from Long Island, right out here, Andre Harrison. Their face for, since they were World Series of Fighting, their face is going to Bellator, along with heavyweight Alex Nicholson. And in return... Bellator is handing away middleweight Melvin Manhoff. I think that's a perfect match. And you know what? Even if you did it straight up, Alex Newman, oh, Alex Nicholson for Melvin Manhoff, I think that trade even works just as good. You know, I think Bellator would ask for something more than Alex, which you throw in your, your company's face for a while. Those are two trades that, I mean, ever since I did this last night, slash early this morning, I was like, I like these trades. I do. So, Kenny, like I said, two prizes coming to you shortly. Keep your eyes out on the po Mr. Postman. Um, I'll tell you what. We'll take one last break. And then we'll start to wrap this shing ding up. Okay? Back after this. I'm Dennis Bermudez. Hi, I'm on Creepy Ian McCall. Yo, I'm Kelvin Gastelum. This is Mark Goldberg. Yo, I'm the world's most dangerous man. Hall of Famer King Shamrock. And you're getting tapped out in the cage with Psycho. Hello, Brian. By the way, Mr. Brian, sir. Um, I need to speak to you about some stuff, and I don't know why I'm typing this, not typing this and just saying this, but I need to talk to you about some stuff. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I want you guys to keep sharing this, please. Check out CycloneComedy.com. Check out Psyche Prods on Facebook. Ask a question so you can possibly be like Kenny Hodgkins too and win a prize. And here's... Here's something that, that, that's starting to stick with me, and, and it's all this, it's more trade talk, you know. I love the trade between Ben and DJ. It, it's a perfect trade. But there's, there's a, actually a, a couple of bad sides to the trade that, that I haven't looked at, I haven't discussed, but we're going to do it now. The The way things work in Asia is they're humble people. They very much are. North America, 
it is what it is. It's the land of the chirper. And look, I'm the first one to admit I, I love the chirping. Chael ever crossed the line? No. Connor? Some say yes, some say no. Ali? No. Some say yes, some say no. I mean, he did throw around the term monkey to call people, uh, big ape to call people. I mean, you, you call a brother big ape now and see what happens. Okay? And that was coming from Ali, the, the most revered man on the planet. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, so here's the thing. Demetrius Johnson is one of the greatest martial artists on this planet. Top 100, easy, overall. He was top 10 in the UFC. He's a perfect fit in Asia w with the attitude they have there. Ben Askren hasn't, hasn't had a fight yet, and he's called out three divisions. And he started chirping at Dana White. The guy, he's a perfect fit for what the UFC needs. Okay. So, so puzzle piece-wise, it's a perfect fit. It's a perfect trade. But here's the, th the downside. Demetrius Johnson's manager, um, Mike Hume, uh, Matt Hume, sorry, is one of the execs at one championship. One of the matchmakers there. That's a conflict of interest that's... That's sort of like the Mets, I don't know, hiring an agent to be their general manager. Oh, wait, they just did that, didn't they? There is a conflict of interest that that's not good. Okay? When it comes contract time, when it, when it comes negotiation time, it's not good and it's a dangerous game to play. And for those of you who don't follow MMA on the other side of the planet, let me just inform you of something. There are no commissions. Uh, there's no regulations on the other side of the planet. The promoters act as the commissions. So if, if, some, if, if judges say, Fighter A wins a unanimous decision... Wins a, a vacant championship. Guess what? They can turn around and say, even though the judges saw it, even though one guy left no scars on him and the other guy had to be carried out on a stretcher, we like that guy more. Guess what? That guy won the fight. Forget what your eyes saw. Your eyes lied to you. That's what happens on the other side of the planet. It happens at one championship. It happens in Ryzen. It happens if in Fight Nights Global in Russia. And I can assure you, I think I might be the only person in the United States staying up till 1.30 in the morning watching MMA in Russia. Stuff like that goes on. It's as corrupt as boxing is here. Now, I'm not saying that MMA here isn't corrupt either, because we all know it is, but to a much lesser extent. That's the only issue I have with the trade. I, and look, like I said, like I answered before, I got two great trades. If companies can work together, I mean, look, Bellator is already going to have a cross-promotion card with Ryzen they if they could cross promote and work they can cross trade why not and, and it's not a trade in an essence of A is being traded for B and they're going to different companies that's not the way it is it's we're releasing you of your contract we're releasing you of your contract 
and you have to go talk to the other company. That's what it is. But in layman's terms, in, 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 in bottom lining it, that's what it is. It's a trade. Because there's no other word for it that we, we don't have yet. So, it's been a fun little ditty bitty shing ding. I want to remind all of you to keep it right here because after me is a kick ass show. Okay? Hosted by the one and only Dennis Newman who is fantastic at what he does. So watch Pinup's Cool Cats and Comics. I guarantee you, you will like that show. You should share that show too. As a matter of fact, you know what? Share that show more than mine. You never hear anybody say that. You know what? That show kicks ass. I keep watching it as well. And I'm not saying they're competition with me, but... You know, we're all here, one family. Hello, Jason. Long time no speak. Um, so, keep sharing. Share, you know what? Share everything here on Strong Island. Because this place, and there's a lot of other networks, this place is the best. It is. So, that being said, like I say at the end of every show, ladies and gentlemen, until next week, I am Cyclone reminding you, just because you, you are not an athlete, doesn't mean you can't be an athletic supporter. Bye-bye.